It's good to have our Ponkas here today from our Ponka tribe here in Nebraska, but also our southern relative, Ponka tribe of Oklahoma. We welcome uh, you back to our homeland here. Uh, I thank you for allowing me to speak before you. I ask my elders here for forgiveness for speaking in front of you. But it's a great day to be here today. And before we get started, we're going to have uh, Dwight Howe, our cultural director, uh, lead us with an invocation. And then when he's done, our, our singers, our drum group here at Cedar Creek, will lead us with a prayer song. So I ask that those of you that can stand, please stand, remove your hats, and uh, Mr. Dwight Howe. grateful today uh, to be here on the hill overlooking the Nivaga Valley, talking into them years and years ago. This is our homeland. I've been telling my relatives how much our, our Ponca relatives in Oklahoma thought of this land here. Like here, we bury our loved ones, like on that opposite hill here, east to west. Years ago, of Oklahoma, we dug an old grave up at the top. We dug a, a grave up at the old part of the cemetery, and we hit an unmarked grave. So we moved it over, and we dug, and we hit the other end of it. And Edison Hinman even gave. He said, East Auger, they're facing the north. That's an old grave. That's how much our people uh, love this land. Their memories of this dark earth rolling hills, those old graves, they're facing north, they're going home, here. So I'm grateful and humbled today to see uh, uh, the chairman of Oma, and nephew here, and Mumaha, chairman here. Glad and uh, makes me feel good to see all our relatives here. So I just want to acknowledge that and say a short prayer. And W will come back. We'll come to today.
On behalf of our Ponca citizens and our tribal council, I wish to welcome each and every one of you here today. Say we belong. Thank you for being here with us today to celebrate this momentous occasion for us, this historic occasion for us. And uh, before we get started, I'd like to take a moment and recognize some special guests that we have here with us today. Uh, again, I'd like to recognize our tribal council who helped uh, make this day possible uh, from funding and, and putting it together. So <coughs> our tribal council members that are here, Crystal, uh, Vice Chairwoman, Becky Sullivan, Candace Bossert, uh, Alex Taylor, if you raise your hand, uh, Patrick Gamore, did I miss anybody? Phil. Phil, Phil. where's Phil? Oh, Give them a round of applause. We also want to make sure that we recognize uh, one of the reasons why we're here and those that are with us today. I'd like to take a moment and recognize all the descendants of Chief Sandy Bear that are with us today. So if you would please raise your hand or rise so that people can recognize you and honor you. to uh, recognize some special uh, visiting dignitaries that are with us today. And as we recognize you, our Ponca Youth Council would like to uh, give you a little token of our appreciation for being here today. These little packages were made by Ponca members and put together by our Youth Council. So as we call your name, if you please uh, stand and be recognized. We're very honored here today uh, to welcome the Ponca Tribal Chairman of Oklahoma, Mr. Doug Rod, thank you for being with us. Also from Ponca Tribe, Oklahoma, we'd like to recognize Councilwoman Casey Camp Hornacek. I welcome you both and all of our, Ponca, our Southern Ponca relatives back to our homeland. You honor us by joining us here today. Um, I, we invited the uh, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry, he wasn't able, wasn't able to attend today, but he did uh, ask me if I would read this letter on his behalf uh, from Congressman Fortenberry. Thank you for your kind and generous invitation to attend the unveiling of the dedication of the statue honoring Chief Standing Bear and Niobrara. I regret that I'm unable to be with you as, to, to celebrate this special moment for the Ponca Nation, for Standing Bear's descendants and the people of Nebraska. The story of this courageous Ponca Chief is the story of human strength and grace in pursuit of fundamental truth, the dignity of the individual person. I continue to be inspired by the great chief's words, and I'm proud that the Ponca Nation continues to share this story for all to hear. In a world screaming for meaning, Chief Standing Bear's courtroom testimony gives witness to the power and justice pursued with humility and courage. I am also encouraged by the effort to bring a statue of Chief Standing Bear to our nation's capital. I am hopeful that we will honor him there as soon as the as soon as a symbol for all Americans. Best wishes for a beautiful celebration. Sincerely, Jeff Fortenberry, member of Congress. Also with us today is uh, representing Senator Ben Sass is uh, one of his assistants, Hannah Cook. Thank you. State Senator Tom Brewer, representing the 43rd District. State Senator Burke Carr, representing the 8th District. I'm not sure if he made it here yet. If not, we'll make sure we identify him later. Also with us today is Adelita Guru, the Yankton Agency Superintendent for the BIA. Also joining us today are Niobrara Niobra Village Board Members, Sheila Keeler, is she here? <laughs> Lindsay Kelly. <laughs> and Village Clerk, Esther Nielsen. <laughs> we have also with us here today is Judy Goshbosch, 
Executive Director for Ambassador Commission on Indian Affairs. And Lucas LaRose. Lucas is the chairman of the board for the Nebraska Commission on Indian Affairs. I want to say, uh, recognize uh, Mr. Joe Sarita, author of I Am a Man, uh, the story about Chief Panty Bear and the People. Joe? And I haven't seen her yet either, but is Jane Klebb here? Jane Cleb with Bold Nebraska and chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party, helping lead the fight against the KSL pipeline. Also with us today are Mr. Art and Helen Tandera. Uh, they, they are the property owners who are leading the fight against the KXL pipeline and who have recently donated land to the Ponca tribe. This land has been used for the last five years to plant our Ponca, our sacred Ponca form. And they're with us today. And actually, Art and Helen, I'd like to bring you forward here for a minute. I'm gonna deviate a little bit. <laughs> and I'm also gonna ask Jane to come down. And I'm gonna ask Mr. Chairman from the Ponca Tribe of Oklahoma to come. Again, Art and Helen donated land of their property, I got it. land that include, is included from our trails here, from when our Ponca Nation was forcibly removed here uh, to, to the south. And today, we want to finish up this process with the honor of Chairman uh, Rod here. We're going to jointly sign and take this land uh, jointly owned by the Ponca Tribe of Oklahoma and the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska as our land. So with you today. <laughs> Please let's give them a round of applause. As we as we stand here today, 141 years ago, the Ponca Nation was removed from the land we are standing on here. Moved to an area that is Oklahoma today, a land that was foreign to us, a land deemed unacceptable to our, to our uh, uh, Ponca chiefs at that time. Who upon their return, after going down to scout out an acceptable site, they found that land to be unacceptable. And they returned here only to find our people preparing to be removed. But today, once again, we are on our land. It is our nation that's coming back to our homeland. We are standing here today because of a promise made by a father to his son. We gather here today to honor that man, to honor one of our chiefs, to honor the descendants of Standing Bear, to honor all of those that came home with him at that time 
and those that made their way back, those that were willing to die to come home rather than stay in the South. This statue honors him, but it also honors all of those that came back and all of those that are here today, all of our people. It honors all of our people who endured injustice after injustice. And it's specifically when our tribe was terminated in 1960. Our people have endured a lot, have lost a lot. And while we honor Chief Standing Bear here today, we also we honor his resilience, but we also honor those descendants and those that followed him and their resilience. So I'd like to take a also uh, like to also take a moment because we're here today because of our relatives that are alive here today with us. And I'd like to recognize them too. So I'm gonna ask all of our relations here that were alive when the tribe was terminated in the 1960s. They've been through a lot. We're here today to celebrate where we are today as a nation. And it's because of them that we're here today. So I'd like those people that were alive during the 1960s when the tribe was terminated to please stand so we can recognize them. Raise your hand, please. Thank you. Many of them here helped to work, work to reverse the wrongs and get the Ponca tribe recognized by the federal government again in 1990. This year we'll celebrate the 28th anniversary of our restoration. This statue recognizes a commitment to a son, a commitment to home, to this place where we now stand. It will forever look over the land that the Ponca's called home for centuries. And very soon, it will look over more land that the Ponca will once again own, including Chief Standing Bear's last allotment and his burial site. As we look out over this valley here specifically, the Ponca tribe of Nebraska is in the final stages of closing on buying 1,800 of these acres here. We will own that again for our people in a place where our people could call home, come home, whether they're here in Nebraska or around the country, and especially our relatives in Oklahoma. This is our land. We own that together. Today's events are due to the work of our next speakers. Their efforts have had wide-ranging effects. This started with a vision and a plan. Joining us today are Judy Goshkabach, Executive Director for the Nebraska Commission on Indian Affairs, Mr. Don Miller Campbell, the donor for the commission of the statues, and Mr. Benjamin Victor, the artist and professor who made these statues. Also joining us today at the at, uh, Alice Erickson was chosen on behalf of the Standing Bear Committee to speak today as a descendant and speaking on behalf of the family uh, for the descendants. And before I call him up here, I, I need to backtrack and I'm a, I need to apologize. Mr. Chairman, Chairman Frank White from the Winnebago Tribe is with us today too. I apologize, I missed you earlier. <laughs> So with that, I'd like to call up Ms. Judy Goshkabach. Thank you, Larry. Wow, this is pretty amazing. I feel a bit overwhelmed. I think back to when I worked for the Ponca tribe 24 years ago, and today I have seen many of my coworkers here and I think how far we have come, how far our tribe has come. And I'm so proud of all of you. And I want to make my remarks be brief because it's so hot and there are more eloquent people here to speak than I. But I would say, um, first of all, as the director of the Commission on Indian Affairs for the past 23 years, it has been my honor and privilege to serve all of our First Peoples in Nebraska and work with all the wonderful tribal leaders. And I have tried 
to humbly represent our people in a positive way. And much of that work has been done with the uh, uh, assistance of Scott Schaefer. Uh, Scott, where are you? We're a small agency in the state capitol with only three employees. And so uh, Scott helps me do the work that I do. And I have to say, um, Standing Bear has been the inspiration for that work. Standing Bear is bigger than all of us. He's bigger than, uh, he represents all the tribes in America. And he is that lightning rod for justice for all. And so over the years, in the work that I've done at the Indian Commission, with a very small state budget, we have tried to educate Nebraskans about our first people through uh, breakfasts where we have awarded over $50,000 in Standing Bear scholarships for the past 12 years. <laughs> and about six years ago, I was very fortunate and blessed to be appointed to the Board of Trustees of Doan University. When I started working for the tribe, I was a single mother with two children. I started back to school at Doan, so late. And then I became the director of the Indian Commission and I went on to get my bachelor's and master's at Doan University. And so I wanna say to the young people here, education is so important and it really can take you places where you have opportunities that will change the world. So, as a graduate of Doan University, I was appointed to the Board of Trustees six years ago. The first Native American to be appointed to the Board of Trustees. <laughs> and it was such a wonderful opportunity. It was a bit scary. But I met this man, a fellow trustee, Don Miller Campbell, who was so nice to me and reached out to me and over the years, I shared with him the challenges that our people face and tried to uh, tell him all the good things about Native people, not the bad things, and how we came to be. And Don was somewhat, and he's an Italian, that's why I don't want to put words in his mouth, but uh, he didn't know the story of Standing Bear, as many people don't, and he was taken by that story. And so because of my being a trustee and meeting Don Miller Campbell, we are here today. Four years ago, this coming Thanksgiving, I had an email from Don just to kind of tell you how we are here today. And it was that Thanksgiving holiday, and Don was in Santa Fe, and he sent me an email saying, Judy, I'm down in Santa Fe, and I'm seeing all these beautiful native drawn sculptures, and I think I can't any in Nebraska to reflect our leaders there. Would you like it if I donated the money for a uh, standing bear drawn sculpture mm -hmm. in Nebraska? Mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> that was quite a great Thanksgiving message. Uh, so, of course, I said yes. So, that brought us to uh, many, many meetings. Three years later, uh, we selected our brilliant artist, Ben Victor. And uh, as the old saying goes, the picture is worth a thousand words. And when I look at the magnificent creation that you've seen in Lincoln and now here, you can see how Ben has captured the spirit and story of Lincoln. Standing here. And so I don't need to speak a thousand words. I know we just need to get to unveiling of that. So, in closing, I would like to say that it is really such an honor to be here and to, um, I think, of those that have gone on. Many of us have lost relatives since our restoration, and many of them are old in our cemetery. And um, we're here for them and for our future, our children. So, this sculpture and the story of Standing Bear can be an inspirational, unifying force in the world. And that's what I'm dedicated to. Going forward, and keep telling the story and taking him to Washington, D.C. Just so many wonderful things have happened. And I hope you will join me in uh, reflecting that and be Standing Bear strong and proud of being a first people. We'd like to invite up Mr. Don Miller Campbell, the donor for the statue that he was just talking about. I will say, when you follow Judy, you don't have to say very much. <laughs> uh, but I will say, what a wonderful gathering this is. 
started this, I don't think we had any idea where it would be. Uh, we knew that it was a, it was just a beautiful piece of art that we are teaching. Uh, we knew we would try to get it to take it in Lincoln, State Chapel in Alabama. We didn't know we would have where to go, and in the National Chapel, this is, this is something from far beyond what I think we ever expected. So it is, a, it, and I think speakers that we had this year, and I would say the luckiest thing we did was select Ben. His, his diligence, his research on the subject has produced something that is really unique, uh, really expressive and beautiful. So I get to stop this for a little few remarks, but because Ben has had so many remarks. Next, Mr. Benjamin Victor. much you know it uh, it has been a long road in the design and the process of creating the standing bear sculpture but what a great day today to be here on the tribal lands the first time I came here it was explained to me about the land how the land <coughs> itself is Tonka and uh, it was it was talked about how when when the ancestors pass on and they're in the ground that even the bugs that are in the ground become a part of the Ponca people. And this land is a part of the spirit of the Ponca. So to see the Ponca people back here today is just so moving. And to see the sculpture that I humbly got the chance to create up here on the hill, overlooking the graves of the ancestors is so moving. I can't even tell you in words how much it means to my heart as an artist. And to see all of you here, it's, it's very humbling as well, because like Chairman Larry Wright said, you know, he apologized to the elders for coming up here to speak. And I feel the same way today. You know, I'm not really worthy or, you know, to be, to be honored so much to speak in front of you today. But with this great honor <coughs> comes the responsibility of creating a sculpture that honors your elder, your ancestor. And I promise you that I did my absolute best. I put my heart into it to every detail so that it will be a testament to his legacy, both here and in Lincoln, and then eventually in the National Statuary Hall in Washington, D.C. And I'm so excited for that because with those three versions of this sculpture, we have a legacy of Standing Bear on his tribal lands first and foremost, and then in the state capitol, and then, of course, in the U.S. Capitol, where it'll speak volumes, hopefully, to, our, to the leaders of the nation right now, so that hopefully their hearts will turn. That story will catch, and they'll turn towards the Native people and remember the wrongs that were done and continue to make those things right, continue to move in the right direction like that court case took the first step for. <coughs> so I thank you so much today, and I appreciate it so much, and I hope that all of you like the sculpture that I've done. And like I said, I'm just humbled to be here to, to get to present. Joining us today is Ms. Alice Erickson, the Senator Standing Bear, speak on behalf of the family. Good morning. My name is Alice Erickson, and I am proudly standing before you today as the great great granddaughter of Timothy Standing Bear. I am humbled and honored that my family asked me to say a few words before you on this momentous occasion. Not only are we here to celebrate our 25th anniversary Ponca powwow. <laughs> but we get to unveil this statue of a man that fought to get us where we are today. Our ancestors' journey was not an easy one, and this statue will forever remind us of how far we've come. The life of my great-great-great-grandfather will be shared and celebrated for generations to come. As I look around, I'm excited to see so many of my relatives here. Powwow is always a time for us to catch up with family we haven't seen in a while, be introduced to distant relatives we haven't met before, to share stories, dance, and just celebrate who we are. For the last month, I've been spending my evenings attempting to make my daughter Quinn and I dresses to dance with Jason. She's only two years old, but I can't wait for her to 
understand our heritage, who we are, and where we came from. I like to share my heritage with others, whether they ask or not. I'm always, I'm always interested to find out whether they know the story of Keith and Eden. Of course, I'm always surprised when someone hasn't heard, but then I get excited for the opportunity to continue to share. I've also run into others who know her story well, and I'd like to share about one of my experiences. I used to work for the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission in Washington, D.C. as a structural engineer, and on my last day of working for them, my team gathered to say their goodbyes and celebrate. Somehow in conversation, my division director became aware that I was Tonka. He began to call me about the chief standing bear call. He had a connection to the man that represented the chief standing bear. I listened intently and was impressed by what he knew. I could tell from the emotion in his voice that he was ashamed of how Native Americans had been treated. Yet he was excited to find out that I was Tonka and he could share what he knew. He ended by saying something along the lines of, Chief Standing Bear's journey is such an incredible story and such an inspiration. When he was done speaking, I, I said, you tell the story well. Now I have something to share with you. I proudly said, I'm a descendant of Chief Standing Bear. Um, uh, he was, I could tell he was taken back and could see tears well in his eyes as he found out. Chief Standing Bear's story is such an impactful one, and I'm excited to see that his life continues to be shared outside of our own. Mr. Campbell? Thank you for donating the statue of a man who <coughs> shapes who we are as Tonka people. Mr. Victor, thank you for sharing your amazing talent with us, and I can't wait to unveil your work. On behalf of the descendants of Chief Standing Bear, we are honored to have the statue look over us, over our land, and we are proud to say that we are descendants of this man, a man who fought to get us recognized as people for <coughs> For that time and to help us with the unveiling I'd like to call on the princesses that are with us today Ms. Nadia Kent the Ponca Tribe of Oklahoma princess for 2017-2018 please have her come forward also with us is Caitlin Begzazone is a standing bear Ponca princess from Oklahoma as well and also joining us <coughs> is Isabel Wright, Junior Ponca Princess from Ponca Tribe of Nebraska. So ladies, you please come up. We will unveil the statue and we'll take a few pictures, but then we are honored here today with our singers. They are gonna sing Chief Standing Bear's honor song. And as they do that, we would ask people to rise and remove your head, head, head gear. And if you can stand, please stand. If you, if, you, if you can't, that's fine, we understand. But as they sing that honor song, uh, we are gonna have Larry Wright Sr. is going to bless and smudge the statue as they sing that song. So ladies, if you would.
Today's story doesn't end here. And while we're here to celebrate this in our homeland, we know that there's a statue with our relatives in the South. But I think nobody can argue with the, the meaning that this has for this statue to be in our homeland, overlooking our land, our traditional land, where our people are buried, all in these hills, the cemetery over here, Standing Bear's own site of people that have been here for generations. I think Ben for sharing that, what he learned up here. Our DNA is in the soil. Everything that grows is pumpkin. It comes from our people, our ancestors. We have more exciting news regarding this statue and the efforts and the story of Standing Bear and the pumpkin tribe to be shared by the world. We have some special recognitions here today. In this past Nebraska legislative session, it was particularly <coughs> unique for the Pumpkin Nation. Senator Burke Carr, is he here yet? Boy, he's missing out. <laughs> you, have, you have to share that with him, Mr. Brewer. <laughs> Senator Burke Carr introduced legislative bill 807. This bill called for a statue of Will Cather to replace the statue of J. Sterling Morton in Statuary Hall in the United States Capitol. Senator Tom Brewer, who's with us here today, introduced an amendment to that bill. And in that amendment, he called for a statue of Chief Standing Bear to replace the statue of William Jennings Bryan in the same Statuary Hall. Conjunction with NCAIA, NCIA, sorry, I get those two backwards. This bill was successfully passed by the Nebraska legislature by a vote of 47 to 1. <laughs> it's through their efforts that we, we, we're here today to also honor that event. It's my understanding that they will, they're pushing to have the statue of Chief Standing Bear put into the U.S. Capitol yet this fall. Also stepping forward again is Mr. Don Campbell with his generosity to pay for that statue that will go in the U.S. Capitol. Wow. And Mr. Ben Victor will again do the statue for us. <laughs> Approximately 5 million tourists and visitors tour the U.S. Capitol every year from around the world. Through their efforts, the world will certainly hear about the story of Chief Standing Bear and the Pumpkin Nation. On behalf of our tribal nation, I thank each of you. We now have some special gifts and awards we'd like to give each of you here today. We'll have Senator, we have a, a gift for Senator, or Senator Har. We'll give that to him later. But we have a special honor for three individuals here. And I'd like them to come forward here and, and stand in front of and stand in front of me. Mr. Tom, or I'm sorry, Colonel Tom Brewer of Gordon represents the 43rd district. <laughs> in Nebraska. As an enrolled member of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe, he is the first native elected to the Nebraska legislature. He was elected in 2016. A 36 year military veteran, Colonel Brewer did six tours in Afghanistan and suffered severe injury, injuries due to a rocket propelled grenade. He holds two purple hearts. Colonel Brewer is a graduate of Gordon High School and Doan College and his amendment was part of the Nebraska legislative bill leading to that placement of Chief Standing Bear in Statuary Hall. Also with us here again, we wanna honor Don Campbell with his financial generosity and his personal efforts to make these statues possible.
His financial contributions, and I, I'm sure he doesn't want this mentioned, but are in the hundreds of thousands. These, these are possible because of him. You honor us in doing so, sir. And Mr. Ben Victor, his work. With this design is amazing. It would be honored to be able to see him in action when they brought the clay mold to Lincoln and it was on display and you could stand right next to him as he worked on it and watch it as, as you can. I know it's tough up here, but later on, as you get close and look at the detail, the beadwork, as they balled up little balls of clay to represent each of those beads that are on there was truly breathtaking. The attention to detail is amazing, and I hope everybody gets a chance to see that. You will forever, your work and your spirit will forever be part of us and in our homeland. It is now my pleasure, on behalf of the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska, and my honor to confer to each of you the highest honor our tribal nation has. We award each of you honorary membership to our tribal nation. You will forever be welcomed among our people for your contributions legislatively, financially, and culturally. They all go together. Each of these contributions contribute to the well-being and pride of our tribal nation. I say to each of you, thank you.